please like and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. Exceptional conditions have led to a compressed all-star experience, one that will be centered on HBCUs throughout the day-long celebration. Atlanta, welcome to NBA All-Star Weekend, the scrunched edition. This is where the annual mid-season basketball carnival is retrofitted to slide snugly inside a Chevy Volt with legroom to spare. Hey, isn't the game being overtaken by smaller players anyway? It seems the All-Star Weekend is merely catching up to the size trend. Actually, this is a one-time only, one-day affair, fingers crossed, given that society remains in the stretch run, fingers crossed, of a global health crisis and therefore the NBA is wisely playing this as safe and scaled down as possible. The weekend normally runs Friday through Sunday. But the 2021 spectacle will last roughly six hours, starting in the afternoon with the Taco Bell Skills Challenge and AT&T Slam Dunk and Mountain Dew three-point contest all serving as same-day appetizers to the game itself, which means not long after church is out Sunday, basketball fans can continue their worshipping at the NBA altar. Maybe you've heard a few all-star players voicing concerns about the game, but that was weeks ago, and there have been crickets ever since. If anything, all the slander is now being directed at the league leading Utah Jazz, courtesy of team captains LeBron James and Kevin Durant, who playfully explained why they kept Donovan. Mitchell and Rudy Gobert sitting in the green room of the All-Star Game draft, long after everyone else was chosen and went to sleep for the night. And in keeping with the last one theme, Mike Conley was chosen as a late injury replacement for Devin Booker. Once the game draws near, and especially when the ball goes up, players play. Every single member of Team LeBron and Team Durant, and every single player who wasn't selected for the All-Star game, are at this level because of their love for the game. And that doesn't change a bit even when there are challenges. That love conquers all. NBA Commissioner Adam Silver probably sensed this when he and Turner, which holds broadcast rights, decided to move forward with the All-Star Game. All the necessary precautionary measures are being taken to ensure, as much as possible, safety for everyone involved. Yes, of course, the league made a business decision here, but also there's the task of continuing the All-Star tradition for the 70th time while stoking the basketball appetite of the customers, who cannot attend the game but need to keep the game on the brain during this week-long mid-season break. This was originally scheduled for Indianapolis, but the plug was pulled on those plans almost a year ago for contractual reasons. In a pinch, State Farm Arena was not only available, but a hotel, the Omni, is attached to the building and therefore the setup makes for a safe and seamless entryway for all participants. The weekend, much like last year's playoffs, is being bubble IZED. So, what to expect? For starters, the league is paying homage to historically black colleges and universities, better known as HBCUs. Atlanta is the hub for HBCUs, with Morehouse and Spelman and Clark Atlanta colleges located just a three-point shot away from the arena. And in this racially uplifting climate, it seems proper and progressive to lend support for colleges and students who historically have been marginalized in the larger scheme. Additionally, the players, many of whom are black, are all in for the HBCUs. Full disclosure, only one active NBA player, Robert Covington of the Trail Blazers, actually attended an HBCU. But the other 99.999% of the players are aligned with HBCUs in spirit this weekend and therefore qualify as honorary graduates. The Artsy All-Star Game Court was designed with the cooperation of HBCU alums, and the NBA and its partners are committed to an initial donation of $3 million to the schools, the Thurgood Marshall College Fund and UNCF are the big beneficiaries. The three referees working the game all attended HBCUs. There will be 1,500 frontline workers, community partners, HBCU alums and students and faculty in the stands. The entertainment, sauced up by the fraternities and sororities, will be courtesy of HBCUs. The entire day will feel like an HBCU homecoming, without the football game, obviously. As for the event itself, it's possible the Mountain Dew three-point contest could steal the night. 
The lineup is solid. Steph Curry, Conley, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Zach Levine and Mitchell. Curry is the natural draw and the favorite, especially given the noticeable last-minute loss of Booker, also a former three-point contest champ. Still, Levine and Mitchell are vying to become the first player to win the slam dunk and three-point competitions. Speaking of the AT&T slam dunk, the big names aren't here, and this contest was perhaps affected more than the others because of the compacted weekend, and also because it'll be held at halftime of the All-Star game. Still, a young contestant has the chance to earn 15 minutes of dunk fame, whether that proves to be Obi Toppin of the Knicks, and Fernie Simons of the Blazers or the Pacers' Cassius Stanley. The Taco Bell Skills Challenge gets Paul, Covington, Julius Randle, DeMontis Sabonis, Nikola Vucevic and Luka Doncic, and the curiosity will focus on the big men to see if they can even begin to compete with the likes of supreme ball handlers Paul and Doncic. Once again the All-Star Game will typically feature the league elite, and speaking of that, this event is unofficially the guaranteed extra game on the schedule for LeBron. That's because, with the exception of his rookie season, he's played them all. This will be his 17th start, extending his NBA record, no other player has started more than 13, and only Kobe Bryant 18 has played in more consecutive games. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's 19 career games is the most in NBA history, but that's in serious jeopardy of being tied next season when the game becomes the 83rd on the schedule for LeBron. James's Sunday teammate, Chris Paul, has been an all-star with four teams, New Orleans, the Clippers, OKC and now the Suns. Only Moses Malone and Shaquille O'Neal, who also represented four teams, spread as much all-star love around. Please like and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates.